first ever video discussion ever, and also first discussion of 2015. So anyways, before I get started on it, I do want to apologize that this video is late. I'm, I'm in, I'm taking summer courses right now, so I've been prioritizing my schoolwork lately, so it happens. Sorry. So, to begin the discussion post, with the summer season coming very, very close, a lot of people are, I guess, sitting at home wondering what they're going to do. Well, many people will probably head off to the movie theater. I mean, what, in May we had Avengers Age of Ultron come out. It was a big success. And if those of you are like me, I was really super excited about Jurassic World. Which, by the way, I did go see it. It is awesome. Anyways. But... With the discussion of movies, or summer movies coming out, I will get straight to the point and just say it. Hollywood doesn't get anime. Why do I say that? Does, so a few years back, Hollywood decided to do a live action movie of Dragon Ball Z. Or, as it's commonly known as, Dragon Ball Z Evolution. Now, as many of you know, it sucked. Big time. In the words of Screen Junkies in their honest trailer for it, it was the worst insult to Japanese culture since the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. Ooh. Oh, gosh. But, yeah. Although... It's not necessarily, I think the biggest problem on why the film was so terrible was that, again, Hollywood doesn't get anime. It just doesn't get it. And to prove that, I will be discussing two anime films that are up for live action films. And I'm going to be talking about what I think the problems are with these movies and also what Hollywood can do to keep them from being, well, insults to Japanese culture. So the first live action movie based off of an anime that I'm going to be talking about is Ghost in the Shell. Now, it's no secret that it's a definite go. They're definitely doing a live-action Ghost in the Shell movie. According to online sources, the film is supposed to be released in March of 2017, and the film will be made by DreamWorks Pictures in assistance with Disney Pictures. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Walt Disney Pictures is helping make a Ghost in the Shell live-action movie? Yeah, yeah, Walt Disney's helping DreamWorks Picture with the live-action movie. Walt Disney? Walt Disney? Like, Walt Disney? Like, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and Walt Disney? What? The film will also be directed by Rupert Sanders, who was also the director for Snow White and the Huntsman, and the lead role of Major Motoko Kusanage will be played by Scarlett Johansson. So, with everything we know about this live-action remake of Ghost in the Shell, what's the problem? Honestly, I really don't have anything. Well, and for several reasons. I know that I came and I started this off with, I'm going to talk about how all this is wrong. And it, don't get me wrong. There's problems. There's problems with this. But one of the big reasons why I really don't have much to say on this live action remake 
is, well, I really haven't seen Ghost in the Shell in a couple of years. I've seen it. Don't, I've seen it before. I just haven't seen it in a while. So I really can't talk about it that much. However, there are some problems with this live action remake. And the only, but the only really big problem with it is their director. My opinion on the director is like, what, what were you thinking? Like, really? Plus, I remember when I saw Snow White and the Huntsman, when I left that theater, I thought to myself, that was a waste of two hours of my life. Now, some of you think that the movie was great, but again, I don't, I thought it was terrible, and the only things that came, that came out of that film that were actually decent were Charlie Theron's acting and the magic mirror. That's it. So, with that much said, why hire a director who made a shoddy film? You're literally asking for a bad movie right there. Come on. I mean, isn't the director the one who practically runs the show? But, yeah. This all comes down to one simple equation. Half-ass director equals half-ass film. So, in other words, you hire half-ass director to make Ghost in the Shell live action, you get half-ass live action Ghost in the Shell the movie. It's... <laughs> but yeah. The thought of getting Rupert Sanders to direct the film, I can already tell you, it's not going to be good. I have heard that this new movie is actually supposed to be based off of the manga and not the film. That's not necessarily an issue, but many people who hear Ghost in the Shell, particularly a lot of people who are familiar with anime and not just the film, or people who have, are just fans of the film, don't necessarily have to watch anime to actually enjoy it. But... When people hear Ghost in the Shell, they don't think of the manga most of the time. They think of the film. So it may be a bit of a shock, if nothing else. And otherwise, I don't think casting Scarlett Johansson as the major is a terrible idea at all. I mean, in looks, she could pull off a good major Matoko. Like, really. I can see it happening. So yes, moving on. The next live action movie rendition I'm going to talk about next is probably the one I'm going to be talking about the most. So the next anime that Hollywood has considered making into a live action movie is Akira. Now, for this one, I'm not really sure whether or not this is ever going to be a live-action movie, but I have my reasons for it. And I'll start with that, with how this whole rumor came about. So, according to rumor, in 2002, Warner Brothers Pictures bought the rights to make a live-action Acura film. However, since then, production for the film has gone on and off, and on and off, and on and off, you get the idea. So, because of that, I've refused to believe any rumors that say, yes, they're coming out with it, no, they're not, until there's some legitimate source that says, yes, we're doing this. Because let's face it, to me, Warner Brothers Pictures has seemed so indecisive about this thing. It's like, one minute they're all like, Yep, we're doing it. And then the next minute they're like, Nope, we're not doing it. It's ridiculous. So yeah, I've refused to believe any rumors about it. So don't ask me when they're coming out with it. I will guarantee you, I will say, It ain't happening. If and when, or actually, there's, it's not a matter of when. If 
Warner Brothers ever decides to make a live action version of Akira, there are some issues that I definitely think would be a really great concern when they do, or no, not when, if they do it. First, the first of these issues is probably one that not only should a live action version of Akira have, but that live action Ghost in the Shell and Dragon Ball Z Evolution should do. Or, in the case of Dragon Ball Z Evolution, should have done. Get a cast and crew that actually is familiar with Akira or Ghost in the Shell or Dragon Ball Z. I mean, don't go in there making this thing not knowing what fans want to, you know, what you think fans will want to see. I mean, for Akira, go watch the film. Go read the manga. Do both. That's what I did. I mean, really. It'll save you a lot of headaches, and it'll save you a lot of angry fangirls like me. I'm a diehard fan of Akira. Believe me, I would be extremely upset. But yeah, it would save a lot of time and money if Warner Brothers actually did their homework. So much time, so much money, if they actually knew what this is about. This leads to my next issue, which is screenplay. So, even though, according to rumor, even though they are not in production of an Acura film, they do have the screenplay. And from what I've heard about it, I kind of cringed. So, that much said, Warner Brothers needs to write the screenplay to where it is closely related to the film or the manga. Again, it will save you a lot of time and a lot of money and will keep fangirls from breaking down Warner Brothers gates. Like seriously. Again, do your homework. Watch the film. Read the manga. Now, I would recommend going, leaning more towards the film, not the manga. Because the manga is 2,000 pages. And over the years, it's been compiled into six big books. So, what probably would happen is, if Warner Brothers decided to do an Acura film that leaned more towards the manga, what would probably happen is, over the course of ten years, they would be coming out with seven films. Now, some of you who have read the manga are thinking, Wait a minute. Akira, the manga series, has six volumes out, not seven. Very true. But here's why I say seven. Hollywood is notorious for taking book series and taking that very last book and turning it into two different movies because they think there is so much information in it, they have to split it. So, instead of making six films, what will probably happen is they'll make Akira the Movie 1, Akira the Movie 2, Akira the Movie 3, Akira the Movie 4, Akira the Movie Number 5, and then Akira Movie 6 Part 1, and Akira Movie 6 Part 2. That's exactly how they would do it. So yes, stick to the film for the screenplay, not the manga. Personally, that's my opinion. Plus, I kind of prefer the film over the manga, although the manga had more details that the film didn't have. But that's just me. Anyways, moving on. So, since we have the story out of the way, the next big issue I have is cast. Now, over the years, and with the on and off production ideas that the Warner Brothers has had over the years, some of the ideas for at least Kaneda and Tetsuo were not bad ideas. I mean, for Kaneda, you had Justin Timberlake. Was, that was the one that stuck out the most. I think Leonardo DiCaprio was up for the running. And even Keanu Reeves. I have no problem with Keanu Reeves, personally, but... 
to stop. And for Tetsuo, the only role, the only actor that really stood out for Tetsuo was Robert Patterson. Now, I probably could see why they would consider Robert Patterson for it. But I'm not really all that excited about seeing a wannabe vampire playing a psychotic team with telekinetic powers. But he could pull off really good Tetsuo cosplay. I can see it happening. So, I've already said some pretty nice comments about the cast. So why complain? Well... Those would be really great options if they weren't in their 30s. Again, do your homework. The characters for Akira are no younger than 14. Tetsuo's the youngest character, if I'm not mistaken, and he's 15. And the characters, or at least the main characters, they're no older than 17. Or at least, the members of Kanada's biker gang are no older than 17, as far as I know. So, for the main cast, keep it young. I don't care what, I don't care where Hollywood or Warner Brothers finds these actors, but keep it young. If you get a 30, if you get an actor in his 30s to play in this film, and try to act like a teen, it's going to look weird. Okay, so, my last, I guess I shouldn't say gripe. This is more of a suggestion, and Warner Brothers Pictures does not have to do this by any means. But, I think that it will, that it will get some big brownie points if they do. So, my last suggestion is simple. Get legendary pictures to help with the film. Why Legendary Pictures? Because Legendary Pictures knows how to make monsters. And their work is pretty darn cool. We've seen it in the Clash of the Titans remake with the Kraken. We've seen it in Godzilla, in the Godzilla remake in 2014. And if you haven't seen Jurassic World yet, or I should say, if you have seen Jurassic World yet, Indominus Rex and the rest of the dinosaurs in the park. Legendary pictures. Again, they know how to make monsters. So, I know what you're thinking when I say that. You're like, okay, well what does that have to do with Akira? Two words. Tetsuo's mutation. If legendary pictures jumps on the chant, jumps on this film, I guarantee you they will bring that scene in the movie to a whole creepy and disturbing new level. Now granted, most of Legendary Pictures monsters are reptilian, or they're more monster, like I say monster, I mean they're more like mythical monster. So doing Tetsuo's mutation is definitely going to be a challenge, no doubt. But I guarantee you if they do it, I I guarantee you they do it, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> now, that's all I really have on Akira the Film. Now, before I end this post, I do want to say as far as a live action Akira is concerned, some time ago, a group called Akira Live Action Project created a trailer for a mock live action version of Akira the film. If nothing else, if Warner Brothers were to ever come out with an Akira live action movie, they need to get these guys. Because, first and foremost, they're fans of Akira. They know what this what the film and the manga is all about i mean i've seen this video i've seen this trailer several times and a lot of it a lot of it ties in the movie and the manga now i feel like there's some problems with combining the two 
there's some details you can pull from the manga and put it into a film. But otherwise, don't overdo it. But if Warner Brothers Pictures were to get people like that, a live action Akira film would be fantastic. So, with that, that is all for this video discussion post. If you want to see the Akira live action project movie trailer, I will have that below in the description. Now, if you're watching it on YouTube, it'll be in that description box. If you're reading this from my blog, I will also have that there. Either way, it will be provided if you wanted to see it. I recommend watching it. It's really good, and they did a really good job. Also, if anyone from the Acura Live Action Project is watching this video, I've seen your video. It's fantastic. You, you guys did a great job, and I'm a big fan of Acura myself, so my kudos. So anyways, I'm done! Yay! So as always, stay tuned for more! Disney? What? 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 Walt Disney?